In Australia, an estimated 400,000 people addicted to illicit drugs have at least one child living at home. Addiction is also linked to homelessness. Almost a quarter of users who inject are without a home. At the Koha Shed Homeless Shelter near Inala, ice addiction is behind Jared and Sharon's own homelessness. And Lily has just discovered both are back on it. It just sucks. It does. <laughs> it does. But use it as a wake-up call. The couple have been staying in the Koha's prefab with their four children for the past month, but things have come to a head. So you need time to heal. You need time to recover. You need time to, to sort out your shit. And you also need time to come clean. Jared stormed off after a blazing row. He's convinced Sharon's cheating on him again. It's bullshit. So if we're arguing, you know, he brings the past up. It's hurting. I know this. And I don't know how to make it better <laughs> at the moment. Lily's now so concerned over their erratic behaviour, she's reported them to docs. Get away from me. Get away from me. And I will. Oh, we salvage my dog. Can you smoke that shit? you think of your kids then? My time! I do think of them, you know, sometimes it's a long way, I just don't want to deal with it. What? I'm going through. And it's sad. If you don't make those changes, you're not going to get them back. My best interests are with my kids. Yeah. We've had to ring docs. It's not an easily made decision, but in the best interest of the kids, we've had to ring docs so that the kids can be taken to a safe haven so that their parents can sort themselves out to become clean. <laughs> I wish I never was introduced to ice. I can't do this anymore. But in my eyes, I'm the only one that's here for them. I have no help. I have no relatives here. I'm the one that put them in this situation. I blame myself. But things are about to get a whole lot worse. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, just ring the um, Ipswich Watch House or Courthouse and find out what's happening, if we have any questions. Yes. Eldest daughter Trinity's just received a call. So maybe just give them a call and Shall we? What's happening. Okay. Oh. It's been half an hour since Jared stormed off, and he's in trouble. What's going on, man? Um, I've got some outstanding warrants for breaches, um, for breaching, uh, not being at rehab and not reporting in. Um, I, should, I shouldn't get held in. I've done nothing. I've done nothing wrong. That's all finished. Um, but who knows, you know? But Jared discovers it's more serious than just an outstanding warrant. The police have also found he's carrying synthetic marijuana. But it's synthetic, it's legal. It's, it's, it's been not banned. legal. It's been banned for a long time. Yeah. You can't just go. Fuck? Yeah. I wouldn't have had it in my fucking pocket. You can, yeah. 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 Unfortunately, yeah, it's been over it's, a year. It's like, it's just a. <laughs> oh, I'm saying, I was in jail for 18 or 16 months and then yeah. I was in rehab for six months. Or, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't. Mate, it was made illegal over two years ago, so... It's just, just as bad as we're in, as bad as carrying... It's weed. the same offence, mate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, fuck's sake. Both Jared and Sharon know drugs have ruined their lives. And in Melbourne, drug addiction has also been at the root of many of Michael's troubles. Mm, motherfucker. <laughs> ah! Today, the former heroin addict has lost his rent. I've got a bad habit of stooking money in really silly places and not committing those places to memory. And no one's going to believe it. If I tell the landlord oh, I lost 200, who loses 200 bucks, you know, on a payday? It's just going to sound like absolute bullshit. Not there either. The truth is, I got a bit pissed. You know, I did. I had a few beers and copious amounts of uh, pot. Michael used to live on the streets, but is now in transitional housing, a stepping stone to a more permanent place. No, not in there. But he's on a final warning from VCAT, not in there. the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. 
I can't just dodge them for a week, the landlord, because I've been to ZCAT three times now um, for not paying rent. And the third time they said, is it for your thick head, Michael? Not one week. We're going to have to evict you. And they already got the eviction order. They just hang on to it from week to week. These are the decks I was wearing. Well, I am really worried that they'll throw me out. And people say, oh, surely they wouldn't with your tea. Well, no, no, they would. There's people lining up around the block to get a place like this for 100 and bloody 10 a week. You know, literally. Um, I've never seen so many homeless people ever. It's, uh, it's freaky, the amount of homeless people. He's decided the truth is his best defence. It's a nice day, isn't it? I'm going to see the lady at Yarra Housing. I'm going to tell them that I lost 200 bucks. They might let me off if I put all of it in next week, but um, I've got a feeling they'll say, Michael, thanks for putting that in, but no, just call it a day, see you later. If that happens, he may well end up back in the old haunts of his homeless days. I did a two year stint of fucking being homeless. Two years, two winters, two summers. G'day, lovely day, hey? Right here, there was a big long couch, um, a little fireplace. I didn't put the couch here. It was, and it was good being here because the joggers, the dog walkers, and um, just you know, the general sticky beat, disapproving old people, um, walking past you while away from them, and you had this cover wall. So, secluded. It's very homely, isn't it? I like it. Bought it off the plan. <laughs> 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 anyway, um. I didn't look homeless when I was first homeless. Yeah, you know, it was clean. Eventually, you just get so run down with it all. You get all grotty, and everything you own gets ripped off or fucked up. So you, you hide it in a bush. That's what I used to do my stuff. There was all old trees here and you were sort of blocked off from view from the footpath and you could hang your clothes on the lower branches to dry and, you know, wash them down the river. I had a campfire, you know, with rocks around it, you know, and um, some people would come and visit me and say, would you like these sandwiches? They're left over from my daughter's wedding and stuff like that. People were nice. There's someone else's stuff in there, but um, I used to leave my stuff like this too. And that's where I made friends with two rats that came out at the same time of night, every night in this tree. And one morning I woke up and he's sitting there right like this with his grey whiskers, this rat, he's going at me, studying me, you know? And he's thinking, what the fuck are you doing here, mate? You know, you've been here for a while, you don't belong here. What are you doing here, mate? And that's when I realised even these sewer rats have a place in society, have a role, you know? And I'm the odd one out. Even the rat thought that. So, there's, um, like a gang of young people that get around here. So I wanted to go somewhere more deeper, right, when no one could see me at all. And I was a bit worried about this gang. And uh, yeah, but they ended up hunting me after all anyway. They, they called me Dog Boy. Dog Boy, are you in there, Dog Boy? They used to say. Yeah, call me Dog Boy. Fuck, could be worse. Are you in there, Dog Boy? Are you fucking your dog, Dog Boy? You know? What kind of children go around picking on homeless people? Michael's terrified he'll end up back here if he can't find his rent money. There's not much hope if I get homeless again. Something's got to give. I can't go back to that. No way. No. I'm never going back. I've had enough of life if that's what happens to me. You know? Hey, girls. There's nothing else to do but face the music. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I'll be back in a minute. Lovely day out. I've lost the money. Yeah, yeah, so it should have been 220. He's got to the bottom of his lost rent money. I was so scared. I thought I'd lost that 200 bucks. He paid it yesterday. So, sorry, love. Yeah, thanks for telling me that. All right, Emrita. Um, I paid 200 bucks um, on Wednesday. So I went out Tuesday night and I was a little bit scattered on Wednesday morning. And um, 
I thought I'd lost the money. I just couldn't, I couldn't fathom where I put it. But now I realise I went to the, gee, I must have been addled. Maybe I do smoke too much pot. In Brisbane, 55-year-old Sue lives on the poverty line with her disability pension and is a proud Inala resident. Inala, it means home to me. It's got past and present in it. And I was conceived here in Inala. Then I come back to marry my husband, ex-husband, in Inala. And now I'm back in Inala to spend the rest of my life with. It gets criticised for being a poor area. And that's correct, it is. It's not rich, but it's rich in people. Divorced for 29 years, Sue's lifeline to her beloved Inala is her scooter, donated by the Salvos. This is my mobility scooter. I travel everywhere, I do my own shopping, I'm very independent. It goes everywhere I go. As you can see, it's made for me, with the soft seat for my back. Oh, hello, beautiful. Missy loves to come travel them with me. She gives me unconditional love. I don't need to love, you know? I love my grandchildren, my grandchildren are my life. But I have Missy, even when I'm sad, I have Missy to comfort me, to love me. Sue lives in constant pain. She has failing eyesight, needs two knee reconstructions, and is riddled with osteoarthritis. Osteo is like cancer. It's taken over my back, my knees, my hands, everything. Most people that suffer osteo are in their 70s. And as the doctor put it bluntly to me, I'm like a 55-year-old in a 70-year-old's body but I keep going. Ooh, what is cold. She moved into her current home six years ago in the hope of finding love with her housemate, Darrell. But it's now become a rental of convenience. I met him online and I thought he'd be the type of man that would care, you know? So I moved over here and it backfired. We had nothing in common. We were good friends for a while, but now things are just getting too much. I've given up on relationships full stop. I'm not going to have me get close to someone just to have my heart torn apart again. No, I'm past it. I can only do so much before I start really wanting to cry. The house is rented in Daryl's name only, which means Sue is dependent on his goodwill. But tensions between them have been rising for some time. Yesterday I was really sick. I was so stuffed up. I just, just relaxed all day. I didn't do anything all day. And Daryl cracked the shits because he walked in the kitchen and goes, thanks for doing the kitchen not. And he said, you've got four weeks, get out. And I said, OK. Knock, knock. Come in. Sue's best mate, Sue, Hello. is yet to hear the news. Hello. How's your day been? Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Very productive. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, that's all. You didn't know I was being thrown out. I didn't tell you, did I? Hey? I've been given four weeks notice again. Again? How many times is that? About the third time? He was sober when he said it. Really? Yep. Where are you going to go? I don't know. Yeah. You know, then I've had enough and no respect from Daryl. Uh, yeah. And I've said nothing to him. And I'm saying nothing to him. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been coming a long time. Yeah, I know that. I just need some help. I need some help ASAP. Women aged over 55 are the fastest growing homeless demographic in Australia. And if Sue doesn't find somewhere soon, she could become one of those statistics. 
My children live in Harvey Bay. I've got no family to take me in, I've got no one. Yeah. And I no longer got the fight in me anymore to fight back. You know, I'll just move, I'm happy to do that. Just, the only problem is I've got nowhere to go. Up to 80% of child welfare cases in Australia today are due to parents drinking alcohol or using illicit drugs. At the Koha shed near Anala, after the initial distress at being told by their mother they might be taken into care, Lily is about to tell the kids why she felt it necessary to call Docs. All right, guys, we just want to have a chat with you and explain decisions made today. A decision was made earlier to report to Docs that you guys need a safe haven, somewhere safe away from mum and dad so mum and dad can get better. We will do anything possible to try and keep them, keep you guys all together. Yeah, honey, it was a big... Yeah. Yeah. I've said from day one that no one has ever taken my siblings away from me because it's like, I guess, losing, like, a part of you. Mum has got issues and they can't really look up to her and Dad. He's got bigger issues, so they can't really look up to him. So sometimes Tiana and I just find it like it's our duty to just be the strong ones for them. But it's so that you get a break from all the, all the drama that's going on. Yeah. And I pray to you guys that I can do a good mum and that I can do things. They're angry. They're allowed to be angry. Oh. Any questions, I guess, or your yeah, It's a temporary solution. You know, it's not forever, and it's only as temporary as your parents want it to be. If mum and dad want to go and fuck up their lives, then let them do it without you guys. Because you guys are... You know, you guys are precious. Lily and Boy are here to help us, guys. We need help. I don't want you guys to go through this anymore. I don't want to go through it anymore. After getting diagnosed with, like, depression and anxiety, like, that took a toll and then just brought me down heaps. And then I learnt to live with it. It was, like, half the time. There's just no point on even being here half the time. But I have to push through, because it's just what you're going to do. Can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> this, I think mm. this will be better for everyone. Yeah. Getting help. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm, all right. Oh, it's what? <laughs> it's hard. That was one of the hardest things to do, is Knowing though that it's in the best interest of the kids and that they're going to be safe, they don't have to put up with any more drug related issues or drug related parents. So for me, yeah, I'm okay with that decision. It's been three hours since his arrest and Jared's on the phone. I didn't say you're in jail. Oh, the no, don't oh, swear at me, Jared. You're not welcome back here. Really? Is that right? Or else the kids are going into Doc's care. Thanks okay. to your fucking outburst. Who said they're going into Doc's care? Um, because of our performance, Jared, our outburst in front of the kids, it's not healthy. <laughs> See you when you get here. No, you won't. Nearby the Koha in Anala, Sue's four-week deadline to get out has left her little time to find a home. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff. I need to find another home. And, yeah, just I'm trying not to let it get to me because there's nothing I can do about it. This needs to be sorted. Some of it's I'm keeping, 
most of it I'm not. Most of it I want to have a garage sale with. There's that room. And my bedroom. I've already started packing some of my bags to move, but I've still got a lot to go. And as you see, I love unicorns. And these are just a few of my dolls. So, yeah, this is a challenge and this, this is the part that hurts the most. I'm going to struggle. Her dolls have been the one constant in her life. Fairies and butterflies come from the heart. The butterflies I started collecting after being in a pretty horrific relationship and the butterflies was a, a sense of setting me free. Sue treasures the rare visits from her children and grandkids who live a long way away. It means she'll have to face her next battle on her own. These are my three beautiful kids. Bradley's the oldest, Melissa's the next oldest and Tabitha's is the youngest. All in their 30s now. I miss them very much. I don't get to see them very much anymore. Tabitha and I left on not such good terms. I uh, don't know what she's doing, don't know where she lives. But she's a very live in the past kid. Yes, I made a lot of mistakes, but I'm a changed person. What mistakes is? I met the wrong men and my children hated me for it. But you make mistakes. When someone says you don't pay for them, they're lying. But it's not easy for Sue to move forward when the past continues to haunt her. Miss my mum, miss my dad, miss the dogs. Part of my childhood I thought was normal, but it wasn't. I was abused by a family member, but it wasn't my parents. My parents loved me. And I spoke to my mother and I spoke to my siblings about it, and none of them believed me, and that hurt. You know, because it did happen. It had affected my relationship and my marriage because I'd get stirred up about it. I mean, I still have nightmares. If someone stresses me, and in this situation I'm in the moment, that's often, I'll go to bed and I'll have that many nightmares and kick and everything. So moving into my own place is a bonus because I won't have those nightmares. It's went all day, isn't it? In Inner West Melbourne, after the panic about his lost rent, Michael's thoughts have turned to trying to get out of his hand-to-mouth existence. Witty. Yeah. Move. I'm feeling this. I want to get my truck licence upgraded to a semi. And that opens up a whole new um, pathway to employment if I can get that licence. So, I mean, there's heaps of semi-driver jobs. I'll look in the paper now. I'll show you, there'll be heaps of semi-driver jobs. Here we go. All right, so here we go to transport and um, logistics. B-double drivers, B-double tanker drivers, driver HC, that's um, a semi-HC. Heavy, heavy combination it stands for. I drove Lindbox box trucks, I, I drove toll. Um, worked at Costa's Fruit and Veg Depot in Laverton and um, delivering uh, fruit and veg. It was just a really good lifestyle. I had to um, leave Kaiser around the corner from work. I'd pick up this truck, get it loaded, and then I'd pull out. And then uh, when I was around the corner, I'd put Kaiser in the cabin of the truck with me, and the boss found out. He already warned me once about having the dog in the truck. So I got the stack. But anyway. I really miss it. Work, work was really good for me. Oh, come on, off my coat, please. I was only homeless because I couldn't find somewhere to, to let me have a dog, you know, and I worked. It was bizarre, I was homeless and I worked. <laughs> Michael's still wrangling with his brother Stephen over the house their recently deceased mother left to the both of them. 
It means he doesn't have the $800 needed to upgrade his trucker's licence. Say goodbye to Manu. <laughs> Come on, Woody. But he reckons he might have found another way to pay for it. I've got some superannuation from when I've worked in the past. And um, I've got 4,800 odd bucks. Because you're not supposed to get your super until you're over 67, but you can get up to 10 grand one-off payment if you're suffering hardship. And one of the qualifications for that hardship is being unemployed for six months or more, which I have been. So they send you some forms, early release of super forms, and I've got them on my email. I have to uh, print them off at the library, then post them off to the, the super company, and then they, my account will get credited. It takes about two weeks to come through. Yeah, library's great when you've got nowhere to live. Um, library is it's heaven. You can read books, learn about things, history, whatever. Um, jump on the computer. Yeah, this is where I came when I had nothing to do all day. Yeah, it's a good place. Okay. Alrighty, I've got my forms. So I'll go home and fill these out and um, pop them in the letterbox and off they go. So a couple of weeks, money! Money! And it's not funny money either. It's now been four hours since Jared's arrest and he's made it back to the Koha. What's going on? What happened? I don't know, like just get out of jail and Sharon's telling you you're taking the kids to docks and... He decides he and Sharon need to come clean about their ice addiction in front of Lillian Pye for the first time. We need to address this drug issue for a start. OK, Jared, that's fine. Okay, and these outbursts and the name, blame, the blaming and the little sneaky shit on. Don't you dare sit there and just do that. No, don't you do that to you. Look at what you've been doing to me and how you've been making me look when I'm the only one here straight up enough to tell the truth. Straight up, when you're offered me. I have a drug addiction that rivals me, Sharon. I can yeah, control and that's mine. your control And I take me. it away from this house. That is your control. Because you were on a come down yesterday no, for the fucking day. You're smoking the pot everywhere. I am not. We would know what No, because it's in the bin now, isn't it? And it gets to like Sharon. She is a strong woman to a certain point, but she's just struggled to say no to the drug. She's struggled to stop allowing Jared to keep controlling her life. The children are being sent to spend the night at a friend's house. I thought my bag would be the heaviest. No, Dad's is. Oh, I'll miss you. I miss you too. Obviously, you know, at the moment they're hurt. They don't want to be separated. They don't want to be taken away from their parents. And I don't blame them, you know. See ya. <laughs> The number of children living in poverty is on the increase, as is the number being placed into care. Homeless and destitute, Sharon and Jared are facing the removal of their own children. They've spent the past two days trying to work things out, whilst the kids stay at a friend's. We're just two selfish, selfish people that are so wrapped up in what each other's doing. You know, we're hurting them. It's just getting us nowhere. The only place is getting us is into docks. I spoke to him yesterday, how I was feeling and stuff, and how everything's got to stop. The controlling, what you do to me is not fair. And he said sorry, but, you know, sorry doesn't really cut it anymore. They're coming home today. They should be home very shortly, so pretty excited about that. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was good giving me and Sharon a few days to um, sort our stuff out, you know, sort out all the niggles and bullshit and have a fucking good argument and a good cry fucking complain, whatever, rah, 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 and uh, move on from there. Docs hasn't been in touch yet. 
With Jared and Sharon promising to work things out, Lily has given them one more chance to get off the ice. That's scary, being told that your kids could be taken off you, because I don't want that at all. That would destroy me. That would make me give up. Hey! hey, hey. There's no way that I'm going to lose my kids over shitty me. But once it's shoved in my face, I can't say no. Yeah, it, it's sad. <laughs> I knew I heard that voice. And my ass is hanging out. Hi, honey. Oh, I miss you too. Oh, that walk was fucking garlic. The situation we're in is dog shit. I'm not sure. The reality is, if we don't nut it out and sort it out and both get help and fix it now, then it's going to be wrecked forever. The kids are to be wrecked forever, you know? Nearby the Kohar in Anala, Sue's worries are coming to a head. It's been nearly a week since she was told she had a month to get out of her home by housemate Daryl. He walked in and I was surprised to see him as you guys were. Trust me. Is it all right though? No, he hasn't said anything, so... If he had something to say, he'd say it. Don't worry about that. Things are now getting awkward at home. Hello. Hmm. I'm listening. Go on. No, I'm finished. Oh. I've got to go to housing now. I mean, I've got to go to the doctors now, I mean. Yeah, I'm Dow. There's plenty of stuff to give away. <laughs> nah, joking. <laughs> yeah. Most of it will be given away. Yeah. Because that's who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's not much to say. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Please, someone come and take her. I'll, I'll pay them. Two thousand dollars a week. <laughs> yeah. No, Jake and she got a thousand diseases and she reckons she's sick, but yeah, she's only fifty-five, so that's about it. Yeah, that's all I know. Yeah. The situation has become unbearable for Sue, and she's now desperate to leave but she's on a disability pension and can't afford to rent privately. Well, you see how nice he is to me? You know, he'll miss me because I do everything as much as I can for him, but as far as I feel, it's, it's hurtful, some of the things he says. Me being a hypochondriac, I can prove all my illnesses. That's what makes me so annoyed. If I couldn't prove him, then I'd give him every chance to call me a hypo, you know? So, yeah, it does hurt. You see how happy I am when he's not here. And there's a difference when he is here. It's feel like it strains on me. Sue's now turned a corner and he's looking forward to escaping from an unbearable situation. When I'm feeling low or upset, I just go for a ride. And everybody knows me as Scooter Sue now. It's lovely. Sure, I get wet. It all boils down to it. I'm having fun. I'm relaxing. Smelling the roses. I'm really happy about going now. I'm getting more eager about it every day. In Melbourne, things are looking up for Michael. He's got wheels. Hello. Did you work a lift anywhere? <laughs> His mother's will may still not be resolved, but he and brother Stephen have finally agreed on something. My brother's living in mum's house now that she's dead. Now, I could make some money renting that house out, but I've let him off. So I said I'll do that if he gives me the car. It's a Saab. It used to be a luxury car in 1998 when it was born. Pretty old now. The main thing is the stereo in it is really kick ass. The stereo in it is fucking wild. Um, oh, it's got other features. It's it's even got it's got mirrors, but they've got lights. Like you're in the makeup room when the battery's on. 
It's an old lady's car. I, I need a ute. Look at me. I'm, I'm a guy that drives a ute, but I'm not. I drive a little old lady's car, and it's mine. Agreement on the car is a good start, but the brothers have a long way to go in the joint settlement of their mum's estate. I'm the executor of my mum's will, but so is my brother. He's got a lawyer to do all of his executor duties. So the lawyer for Stephen went and picked it up from mum's house, drove it to the lawyer firm. I went and picked it up from there. Now, my brother doesn't even have the brains to realise that lawyer would have charged a thousand, two thousand bucks for that. Now, why should I fucking pay that? But at least Michael's got a new car to smile about. And there's something else too. He's successfully applied for a new set of false teeth through the Victorian Denture Scheme. Yeah, I'm picking up my teeth today at four o'clock. Um, yep, the teeth have emailed me and said, we're waiting for you. We're, we're hanging to go. I won't have to be so self-conscious when I talk to people because um, I, I do get embarrassed when they're having teeth. Not everyone can pick that I don't have teeth. I think they just, um, look, yeah, is them. They just assume I'm an ugly bastard or a simpleton. I've always been a ladies' man. That's why I'm so wounded with, with this teeth situation. It just, it just strips your confidence with that sort of thing, getting around with no teeth. I'm going to get my teeth, Kaiser. You wait here. I get laid occasionally. Yeah, when I come back, I'll have teeth. Mwah. You wait here. That doesn't sound very nice. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful to women saying that. What I mean is I meet girls constantly. And if the house is in all right condition, yeah, they can come back. But yeah, I am dangerously handsome when I have teeth in my head. I don't find it hard to um, pull them, put it that way. But, um, you know, we're talking about with teeth, not without. Unlike methadone for heroin, there's no known substitute for ice, which makes effective drug treatment for addicts extremely difficult. I don't want to answer it. Jared and Sharon's pledge to kick their own ice habit and work things out has lasted just four days, ending in another blazing row. Mum went psycho for nothing, I don't know. And then she like started smashing shit. It was like bigger than like anything and like mum just had a psycho. The row triggered multiple seizures in Jared, which led him to be hospitalised overnight. The seizures are believed to be linked to his drug abuse. It would have been his third one. One of them, he stopped breathing, and I, I just freaked out. I was like, what the fuck? Pretty scary. I thought he was going to die. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me to shut up, please. Apparently, I was texting this person Amounts of times, and I seem to pack, and it's like, are you serious? Like, I'm trying to make our family work. Why would I do that behind your back? He found a f I had a phone, a secret phone. It wasn't really a secret, but you know, I see his point now. If you want to be a bitch about it, go away. Then he ripped my handbag off me, and I just lost it. I lost my shit. And, and Trini said, Mum, I've never seen you that angry. You even scared me. A lot has changed when Jared was in prison. I found myself again, and I do blame him. He's taken me away again. When I worked so hard to find myself, you know, the person I wanted to be, like me attacking Jared, that definitely is not me. And there's another bombshell. Sharon has only just decided to reveal to Lily that Jared has a domestic violence order against him. It requires him to keep away from her and the little ones and comes from an earlier time when they were separated and Sharon was staying at a friend's house. I'd stopped answering the phone to Joe because he constantly rung and texted all night and then he rocked up to the house I was staying at and had two of his bikey mates. Um, he ripped the fence and ripped the screen door off the, yeah, the main door. You know, domestic violence is an absolutely no for us. Yeah. I want to change yeah. that. How can I change with a person that is so controlling? Yeah. I think it goes both ways. I think you guys both need to um, kind of, you both need that break 
at the end of the day, it's the kids that suffer. Neither Sharon nor Jared have been to drug counselling, despite attempts by Lily and Pi to set it up. No one's giving anything. No. And you're still in the same spot. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and you're, you're, you're slowly destroying everything around you. Yeah. yeah. And children. And exactly. We're only a stepping stone for you. Exactly. It. We can't fix everybody's problems. No, you cannot. No, you can't try. <laughs> the arguments have just gotten wild. They haven't made changes down there. We also got one that Dad bought drugs on the property on the weekend, and we don't do that. And keeping them here as enabling domestic violence, we're not going to do it. There's no way in hell I am dropping on a DVO. <sighs> enough is enough. He's breaking the rules that actually been near me and Shelby and Peyton. It's been nearly a week and the family have yet to hear from Docs. But the latest row, continued drug use, and now the DVO have given Lily no choice. She's told the family they have to leave. Sharon and the younger two will go into alternative accommodation that we've sourced. Sure. OK. The plan is that we have to leave here today because of mine and Dad's actions. Because you just don't give a fuck about anyone but yourselves. How come we have to move? Can't Can we, we hop off the bench, please? Because that's what mum and dad do best. We get close with someone and then they rip us away. Ice is a killer. It makes you feel that high on life that no one can hurt you. You're not thinking about shit, you know, your problems in life. But when you're coming down, it's like reality hits and it hit hard. I'm an emotional wreck because of it. I'm scared that I'm going to die sorting out their arguments. Apparently they have to go with mum because of the ABO. I'm sick of being a 16-year-old with three siblings and having to be the parent to them all. Jared. Jared. Now out of hospital, Jared. Jared's found out they've been asked to leave and he's driving back to the Koha in a mate's ute. Jared. But the phone has just gone dead. He's not going to die. Jared. What's happening, Karen? Um, he's just had a seizure. We're driving. Shelby. Does he still have a seizure? I don't know. The phone hung up. You yeah, tell when Joe's having seizures is, like, the fitting. You can hear the fitting and the noises he makes. Yeah. Hey, baby. Is he answering? Uh, he wasn't answering, but the phone hung up. You okay, baby? I think Dad's gonna die. He's not going to do like that. Why is he gonna go? Hmm? Is he gonna crash? Is he in a union? It's okay, baby. He'll be home soon. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. The number of regular ICE users has tripled in four years to more than a quarter of a million Australians. Although seizures are rare, other side effects include aggression, paranoia and impaired memory. Dad, move! Move! Jared's arrived back at the Koha shelter, still suffering the effect of his recent drug-induced seizure in his mate's ute. I've been in hospital, not very well. I've been having these seizures. And uh, I can normally control Jason. them and take care of them and things are all right, you know? Pass me that thing you bought in your hand. Yesterday I had some. Uh, I just, please, I'm I ripping it up. I couldn't take care of them. Dad, don't, you could have won something. Come on, now hop off. And uh, the shit that uh, I've been through. The okay. boys were using music and it fell Hang on, I've got to think. Um, I've got to think. Um, I can't stop. The stress brings on another one, and Jared becomes confused. She's driving, Dad. Oh, he's not driving his manual. Don't, don't fucking, don't fucking play with me, Cam. I'm trying to think of this. I'm, I'm trying to think here. here. Don't. I'm playing games. 
just don't scare me. Oh, God. I put up with a hell of a lot of abuse. But when you're being told you're a bad mother, you're a crack whore, you'll, you won't succeed in life. You deserve nothing. Enough is enough. Please, someone help me here, please. Could someone fucking help me, please? Please. They can't. Really, like, oh, please, I am fucking begging you for my kids. Please. Stop playing these games. No more couple of days. Please, Ronnie. Oh. Jared is asking Sharon to lift the restraining order she took out against him. Mum, can you please drop this ABO? Even Shelby's me. asking you to. Please. Give me a few days. No, you've already had an update. Then look at what you're doing. They just want to be happy for crying out loud. We all do. Until everything is done, then I'll drop it. You should a couple of days. Yeah, I, I, I changed my mind. Oh. That's not fair on the kids. I know, it's not fair on the kids. That is really not fair on them. What, you know, you're not scared of me. Same. You're scared of losing your children. If I was going to hurt you, Sharon, I would have hurt you, mate. You know that. I don't want to hurt you. If I hurt you, I hurt my kids. A few days. That's all I'm asking. What's today, Tuesday? Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. <laughs> Worried about the increasing frequency of their dad's seizures, Tian and Trinity have decided to go with him, but they don't know where they'll be staying tonight. Be good, son. Stay safe. I love you. The little ones are staying with Sharon at a women's shelter. I love you. The nightmare is over. No more will I be controlled. We'll see Dad soon. I'm ready to make all the changes I need to for myself and my two small children now. So I love you, Dad. Love you. There's no more drugs in my life. You know, no more stress. My stress is gone. <laughs> and whatever Jared chooses to do, that's his problem now, not mine. When I met Sharon, I'd planned on being with Sharon for the rest of my life. I believe she's my soulmate. And I love my kids more than I love oxygen. No, I always have. I love you. I love you. The stress dealt out by life's hard knocks can be relentless. I'm not stressing about what can happen. I'm looking forward to what will happen. There's a difference. If I stress about everything and anything and whatever, I'm not doing myself any health favours. You know, I'm not. It's just whatever will be, will be. After a shaky start to his way, Michael's outlook has taken a turn for the better. Mink's got teeth. Proving life can have its moments. <laughs> How the fuck are you? I'm fucking grouse. <laughs> yeah, um, they feel too big and it's hard to talk in them. But you know, there's worse problems to have, like having no teeth. G'day. How are you? Good. You're already chatting up the ladies, eh? I'm a ladies man. Oh, fuck off you. Oh. Next time on Struggle Street. Uh, did they give you a assessment letter? No, they haven't given yeah. me anything yet. Sue's battle with housing red tape means she's running out of time. It's my next step business streets. Living on the poverty line with a disability can lead to heartbreaking decisions. Would you be able to fund your own wheelchair? There's no possible way. Like I fail? Like I'm a failed parent. And Jared's out in the cold. Do your children have anyone they can stay with in the meantime? Um, so we're running out of time to find somewhere to stay. Now it's getting serious. The smile was, the smile was gone.